back ox tools. I'm Tom. So uh, whipping up another batch of meatloaf here. This is number 105. Um, <clears throat> got some uh, interesting stuff to take a look at. Uh, a couple of updates on tools that I'm working on. A um, little product review um, that's on the agenda. What else? Um, I don't know. Let's just take a look. Uh, I got a bunch. As usual, it's the uh, it's the mix of interesting subjects. So let's check it out. Okay, so this first one here, um, it's kind of an interesting uh, thing here. Um, I had mentioned that I needed some new guide rollers for the uh, Marvel saw. And um, a gentleman in Texas named uh, Clint LaFont um, said, hey, I got some of these that have been on the, uh, in the, on the shelf for at least 20 years, and we don't have a Marvel saw, and I don't ever see us using them. Um, do you want them? And I said, Sure. <laughs> uh, anyway, so Clint sent these along, and these are exactly what I need. These are new old stock uh, Marvel uh, brand um, guide rolls, and there's one that's flanged here and uh, one that's straight. So these uh, sit in a, in a holder that I'll show you in a sec, and uh, the blade passes through there, and it keeps the blade uh, nice and straight. So uh, um, now these get exposed to coolant, and coolant gets in there, and then they rust. And uh, so this is kind of a, a consumable item. So uh, Clint, um, thank you very much. He teaches uh, um, Master Cam and uh, CAD at um, let's see, what's the name of it? It is uh, Austin Community College. Uh, architectural uh, design program. So uh, anyway, uh, Clint, uh, thank you very much, and uh, we'll uh, we'll make use of these, and you'll see them get installed on the machine. So thank you, sir. Okay, so so just to kind of put things in context here, this is the uh, the lower uh, guide holder here, and these uh, let's just go ahead and take them out there. Uh, these guys fit in here, and they're kind of a snug fit. I love this. Uh, they got a little little Marvel uh, cardboard in there. Oops, that one's got to go on first. But anyway, you kind of get the idea there. Um, and then uh, this is the mount. This is the mount here. And the way this works is these screws here, these allow you to kind of adjust the attitude of the blade a little bit uh, back and forth and, uh, and kind of true things up. And these are just retained with a couple of set screws here. Now it's got a little alignment mark on it so uh, I can put it back where it was. Now uh, one of the other things I wanted to talk about was uh, you see I, I sandblasted these and then I painted them and I painted them with a uh, with a paint that I've talked about before but it's worth mentioning again for uh, for folks. So let me uh, pull out a little bit and then we'll get the can and we'll show you the can. You know I, I forgot to mention uh, Clint uh, who uh, Lafont, who sent me these uh, these nice uh, guide rollers, he packed it. He packed it in a priority mail small box, but uh, he also packed it with um, what appear to be just you know napkins here, right? But I have to say that these are some of the the best uh, napkins I've ever seen here, right? I, I wish the restaurants around here uh, use this type of napkin. It must be um, the only. The only outfit that would uh, probably invest in a really good paper napkin is uh, a real Texas barbecue place, okay? So, Clint, uh, maybe you can confirm that uh, if that's the case, if these come from your favorite barbecue place that's near, uh, near you there, um, or what the story is on these, because they're really, really nice. They're super thick, and uh, I've been using them and, uh, and, and enjoying them uh, almost as much as the rollers. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right, so here's some of the parts that I've painted here. Um, and these, these are springs here, and they're pretty badly corroded, but um, I'm going to run them until they, until they break. All these do is just hold these up so that they engage uh, with these little notches that are in the table that locate this. So um, um, we're going to go ahead and install these little oil, um, oil caps here. Uh, I made a little tool, so we'll go ahead and put those in on camera. That'll be fun. And uh, this is the stuff that I've used here uh, to paint this. And if you haven't tried this, this is pretty good stuff here. Um, it's called Steal It, and McMaster Car sells it, so there's a link in the description so you can go check it out. 
Um, it's not cheap, but it's a polyurethane paint um, that has actual stainless metal in it, okay? These flakes, it's metal flake, basically, but it's 316 stainless, okay? Um, yeah, 316 stainless in uh, polyurethane, okay? So this is a chemical resistant paint. We used to paint uh, bleach fillers with this stuff and uh, it holds up, uh, you know, if you if you prep properly and put it on properly, uh, it holds up in, uh, in a very corrosive environment. So what's left here is cured polyurethane with stainless steel. So um, um, it's actually pretty good stuff. So anyway, check that out. If you got something that uh, keeps rusting on you and you can't find any good paint, uh, they have a brush on version too. So um, um, you can get a brush on version. So, okay, so let's, uh, let's go put these in. those in there. It's got a clamp on the side there. Let's get that straight with the world. Yeah, that'll work. So these are just knock-in here. Um, you know, this is a press fit in a quarter inch hole. So uh, I made a little tool. Let's see if I can get it in there without snapping my finger here like a mouse trap. Okay, like that. Um, okay, so that's offset that way, so I'm going to go that way. Let's put that in there. Okay, as soon as it feels it hardens up, stop. <laughs> okay, all right, let's do this. All right, so that pisses me off. I put it in a little bit crooked, but uh, I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. One of these hit the spring was uh, kind of extra long, and uh, all right, let's try to get this straight this time, Mr. Wizard. Can you see that, or is my big hand in the way there? One of these springs was sticking up and stabbed me in the fingers. So, okay, so those have been painted with this uh, that steel at paint too, and these are you know you can see some of the pitting there. This is a music wire spring here, um, and and so they you know they corrodes at a different rate than cast iron. So you can look at that, and these are kind of tricky to replace here too. So we're gonna we're gonna go with it until they break, and then we'll uh, we'll replace them. So. Or I'll have to make new ones because I don't think you have to buy this whole thing as uh, one part. All right, so next one here. This is something I did the other day. Um, I've been wanting a pair of channel locks, um, but with copper jaws. Okay, so I went ahead and did some. Now this is kind of a an extension of something I've done before. This is the first pair I ever did here. Um, pair of vice grips here with copper jaws and you, as you can see these have been well used okay in fact here I, uh, I uh, ground the rivet off knocked it apart took it all apart and uh, and uh, redid the thing so uh, and retapped the little rivet too I remember doing that um, and then here's a here's a later pair that's uh, a little simpler here uh, where I just said screw it and welded it back in so okay, but these are silver brazed in here Okay, uh, this is all silver brazed and uh, The copper ends up after the after the brazing it ends up kind of dead soft, which is really nice and You know for all those jobs where you're you want to grab something and not mark it up, right? And uh, so needless to say, you know you hold a shaft or you hold something and you keep it from turning while you do something else, uh, these work out really good. So uh, anyway, I did the channel locks. Um, part of this was uh, uh, for helping pull stuff off of the surface grinder magnet too. And you see we got a little, we got a little radius at the end there so you can, you can kind of roll onto that, uh, onto that radius and not mark the chuck. 
uh, or your uh, your nicely ground surfaces uh, that you're trying to pull off of the uh, the magnet. So, okay. Anyway, uh, this is a little uh, new tool there to show you guys. Uh, pretty easy to do. You just get some copper and uh, some um, um, silver solder, and uh, off uh, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> All right, so this next one here, this comes to us from my friend uh, Gordon Long. And um, Gordon uh, works for uh, UC Berkeley, and he works for the physics machine shop, okay? Uh, they get this cool little shop down in the basement. Uh, uh, the ceiling's about, you know, seven and a half feet or eight feet high. Feels real low in there, and it's just packed full of machines. So it's a real neat place. So one of these days, I'll... Uh, try to do a little video tour over there uh, if possible. Anyway, uh, Gordon has a Pratt & Whitney level, actually he has two of them now, um, and the second one that he bought, he got an original brochure with the thing, which is pretty spectacular since uh, these haven't been been made for, uh, you know, I don't know how long, quite a while actually, okay? Uh, but this is the original brochure showing the thing and all the cool features and here's these thermal isolators that, uh, that I've been talking about and uh, they're setting up a Pratt & Whitney lathe. In fact, on the back of a Pratt & Whitney lathe there's a little emblem that says use a precision level to level this machine and it has a picture of this right on the, right on the machine. Pretty cool. So. Anyway, Gordon scanned this, did a kind of a high resolution color scan, and um, we'll take a look at the second page here, and shows uh, dude uh, making adjustments there and, uh, and, and calibrating it. And then uh, here we're setting up a big machine, and they've got a, uh, you probably can't see it in the video, but uh, there's, this is a scraped uh, a parallel here, and he's on a couple of uh, large cylinders in the V-ways here, and they're they're level in this big, uh, whatever that is, a planer mill or something like that. Okay. Anyway, just kind of neat, uh, Gordon. Thank you very much for uh, for scanning that. Um, I'm gonna see about getting these map boarded and maybe framed just to you know for shop art. It's pretty uh, pretty neat stuff. So thank you very much. All right, so I've been working on this marble saw, and uh, I, I ended up having to take apart the, the lower pinion uh, shaft, and it's got some problems. Uh, you know, nothing major, you know, it's all fixable stuff, but uh, um, let me show you. So this is, the, uh, this is the pinion shaft here, okay? So it's got a uh, kind of a weird angle bevel gear down at the bottom and it drives a, uh, a larger gear, and that's the kind of the main reduction uh, for the, the blade drive. Now, um, this part of the shaft is kind of normal, and then it just gets worse as we go down here. Uh, now, this, this is supposed to be here, so don't, uh, don't stress out. <laughs> um, but this is just very severely pitted. Um, it got wet and it got road wet and put away hard, or however that goes, and uh, it's... Uh, uh, I'm not looking good. So I might have to send this to my, I'm going to sandblast it and take a look at it and uh, measure it a little bit. Uh, but I'm probably going to end up sending this back to my buddy Adam and have him do a little spray build up on this and uh, we'll return that, um, you know, and bring it back. Now the reason for that, so I said, oh, well maybe I'll just buy a new one of these, right? And I said, how much could it cost, right? <laughs> well. This particular part here, all by itself, is 780 bucks. Now, if it was 70 bucks, I'd just buy one. If it was 170, I'd complain about it, but I'd probably still buy one. At 780, we're fixing this one. <laughs> and then here's the bushings. Uh, it runs in uh, bronze bushings, and uh, they're actually grooved, which is kind of interesting because um, the way the oil is introduced into here, it's really kind of not conducive to uh, uh, oil groove type bushings. So um, anyway, so I gotta make some new bushings or buy some new bushings from uh, from Marvel or DRC saw or somebody like that. Uh, so these are gonna get sandblasted and we'll paint them with that steel it paint. And uh, this will uh, probably get spray welded and, uh, and returned and uh, we'll cross our fingers and see how long it lasts, so. Anyway, so this is kind of some of the stuff I'm dealing with on that saw, and uh, but it's all fun, you know. And uh, you can see this was just full of, 
of old uh, saw chips and, and rust and corrosion. This is a cover that kind of goes around that. So uh, um, anyway, we'll doll all this up and uh, make it purdy. So this is a new uh, tool acquisition here. Um, this is the eBay find here. Uh, what this is, is uh, this is another one of these uh, dynamometers, okay? Uh, or it's a crane scale. Some people call it a crane scale. Um, this one came out of the, out of the Navy. It's got a uh, Navy uh, uh, calibration tag on it, okay? It's made by Shatlin. That's how I've always pronounced that. Uh, um, anyway, John Shatlin and Sons, New York. And uh, this one um, is good to 10,000 pounds. So I have some plans to do some more um, um, fastener testing. And uh, the one uh, that I built is, uh, I think is good for uh, 6,000 pounds. And uh, this one can go to 10,000 pounds. So uh, let's, uh, let's give this one a try. Let's kind of try it out and uh, you can see how it works and, uh, and uh, we'll go from there. Oops, this is good. All right. <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah. Flip that around. Do it that way. So you guys can see it. Right. The sling is on, it's got I got a choker on the on the bottom so I can't, oops, I can't uh, rotate it easily. All right, so I got it tied to the corner of my welding table here, and there it goes. 500 pounds. All right, 500. There's a thousand pounds right there. So, uh, you know, my crane's only good to so much, so uh, I don't, I don't want to uh, stretch. This table weighs 2,000 pounds, so <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> I don't want to uh, pull my crane down the top of my head. The, the lift has a higher capacity than I've uh, uh, kind of self-limited the uh, design to. So anyway, so that's how that works. So let's, uh, let's, go, let's see if it goes back to, uh, oops, oh my, goes back to zero. Yep, goes back to zero. Now the other, the other thing that's neat is uh, I, put my, I, I repaired my, uh, the one that I built and I put it in line with this one and uh, they track nicely together. So uh, that was kind of a nice confirmation too uh, that uh, I didn't kill mine <laughs> utterly. It's just uh, got uh, temporarily harebrained. All right, anyway, Shetland uh, crane scale. All right, so this next one here, um, this is a little bit of a tool review, okay? And we got a couple of tap wrenches here. And this is the one that we're, that we're kind of checking out. Um, so now I was approached by uh, these guys here, uh, Northern Machining, and they manufacture this tap wrench here, and they asked me if I would do a, uh, if I would do a tool review on it. And uh, I said, so, you know, I looked at their website and, uh, and checked out the tool, and I said, uh, yeah, sure, I'll do one, um, you know, when I have time. <laughs> So uh, anyway, I have a little bit of time, and uh, and here's the tap wrench. Now I bought this, okay? So they didn't give it to me for free. Um, I bought this, and I said I will give it an honest review. And if I don't like it, I'm going to say so, okay? So so far so good. It looks pretty good. Uh, let's set this one aside because this is just for comparison right now. Now this is how it was packaged. It was packaged in this. Uh, this kind of heat shrink stuff here. And I'll tell you, when I unwrapped it, it had, it had popped loose from this packaging. So, um, um, you know, just, I don't know, this stuff's okay, right? The, the packaging's a little light duty here, I would say. Um, you know, maybe you guys can find a tube or something to, to put this in the tube or whatever, okay? Um, anyway, just a little comment about the packaging here. Um, you know, it's just a business card that's hooked on there, but you know, it's okay. All right, so we can whine all we want about that, but uh, that's not really what we're what we're here for. Okay, so the idea behind this tap wrench here, okay, uh, it's kind of unique, and um, 
you have a regular tap wrench here, and when you, when you open it up and you put different sized squares in it, the center of that square shifts uh, in relation um, to the center of the tap handle. Okay, so now what th these guys have done, um, have, they've come up with a solution as to, to keep the tap on center of the tap handle. Okay, um, and the reason for that is now you can actually pilot this in a chuck or in the lathe on a, uh, on a center. So the tap always stays on center. Now if you look at, if you look at different taps here, um, you know, a big half incher, now it has, a, it has a little center in it, okay? So, you know, most uh, mortals uh, will just stick it in like that and they'll put a center in there so it's on center, right? Okay, now the problem is when you get down into, let's see, where does it drop off here? Right at three A's. Whoops, no center. So what do you do, right? So their idea here is that, and we'll uh, we'll open it up here. So these these are locking elements here. All right, we'll open those up, and then it has a little scroll like a chuck, which is pretty cool. So it's got a little spiral groove in there and a couple of pins. Okay, so we can put that in there like so. Sure, I don't bozo that. Now, this is this is not this doesn't hold it for uh, for tapping. You got to run these down on top of it and back up the jaws with the handles. Okay, so now that tap is on center with that stem and that little 60 degree center that's in there. Okay, all right. So anyway, that's the uh, the we're, we'll go we'll go over on the mill and we'll spin it in the mill uh, a little bit. Uh, it's, it's made out of tool steel, they claim. Uh, they didn't say what kind. It's got a real nice uh, um, black steam oxide or whatever this is uh, finish on it. Uh, the machining looks really good. Uh, crisp corners and uh, just generally, uh, you know, a nice, a nice tool. So let's, uh, let's go over to the mill and let's uh, give it a spin in the mill and try it out. Okay, so here's the idea. That little shank can go in here, like so. And then, uh, let's, uh, well, let's just put it in neutral there. And you see that that's spinning on center there, okay? So I've got an instant, uh, an instant pilot there uh, for tapping. So pretty clever, and uh, now, you know, Normally, I would just kind of power tap that with the chuck, okay? Uh, but there's times uh, maybe I'm doing stainless and it's a deep hole and, and I can't get enough uh, purchase on that, so uh, I want to use a tap handle. Um, let's just go ahead and use it there. I don't know how sharp this tap was. Oop, all right, so it came loose in my chuck. That's my fault. So this is steel. Um, all right, so my only comment is, is there's a fair amount of pressure on this right now, and these handles feel kind of small to me, uh, the pressure against my hands. Um, I mean, it's working, obviously, but uh, okay, well, I'm almost through. But these, uh, this diameter seems a little small. You can see this one here, these are a little bit bigger, and but they have a little more area, so you know, you know you're not having that much pressure, okay, on your hands. All right, well, that looks pretty good. Looks like it works. And yes, it's on center. So, uh, all right. Once again, my my chuck. So now this is loose, but th that's okay because uh, these are still backing up the the jaws. So. Uh, 
Um, everything's secure. The tap's not coming out. Now we'll take it out. We just got to loosen that a little bit, and then, then, what's going on here? Oh, what's going on here? Huh. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, that's interesting. Let's, let's open that up. Let's open it. It looks like, the, so this is a 3A16 here, and it looks like, oh yeah, look at that, son of a gun. The distance, the distance across these jaws here um, is a little bit smaller than the distance across uh, those. So what happened there was, um, you know, the tap loaded up a little bit, right? And what it did is it rotated into the frame and kind of locked in there a little bit. Hmm, that's interesting. All right. Hmm. Yeah. So see, I can't I can't rotate that tap um, through. Okay. So I I think it's a simple solution. Um, is that this distance here just needs to get opened up a little bit. For whatever the maximum size tap that this uh, would ever be used for so uh, a 3 8 fits so i'd want to use it for that um let's see let's see if another one does that so this is half inch but but that particular square is a, a little smaller than that one so this is uh, who makes this one uh, the name's worn off of it. It's probably a Greenfield. It's a spiral point gun tap, uh, but that square dimension is uh, is a little bit bigger. So this is this is normally what you'd you'd want to see there is that can rotate in there. So okay. Anyway, uh, Northern uh, Machining sells these. Um, honestly, uh, um, um, it's a good looking tool, and uh, if you like it, uh, there's a link in the uh, description. Uh, go check them out. And they're nice folks, and uh, they were very very nice to me. And um, um, there's, a, there's our product, okay? All right, so some of you uh, sharp-eyed viewers out there uh, may have noticed uh, uh, that I made a change to my apron toolkit. And, you know, I've kind of talked about this in the past, uh, having some tools with you, uh, an assortment, uh, very carefully selected items. Um, is important to your efficiency in the shop. Now, this next one uh, you can blame, or I can blame uh, Robin Renzetti um, for uh, this addition to my kit. Um, and if you guys haven't checked out uh, Robin's channel, it's uh, Rob Renz. And um, uh, there's a link in the description, and then I'll put a link up here on the screen for you. Uh, Robin is a real cool cat. Uh, I, <clears throat> I just came back from Pennsylvania and I visited him back there and um, it was like we worked together for years. Uh, we were just uh, um, hucking it up and it, it, was, it was really nice to meet him in person and see his shop. And he's a real deal. He's doing real nice tool making work, um, not fake stuff like me. So <laughs> anyway, Robin's the real deal. Uh, check out his channel. And uh, what, what uh, he turned me on to was carrying a pair of tweezers. Now, this is something that I use all the time in the shop. You're dropping stuff, you're picking things up, you're positioning things to do assembly and whatnot, pulling on stuff. Um, you know, they're like small pliers. Um, but I never really thought about uh, carrying any on me. And part of the problem was, uh, had to do with the, uh, the length of them. So, you know, they, they come in all these different lengths. Well. You know, I was talking to Robin, and uh, he's got some longer ones that uh, that he liked, and uh, so I started kind of reevaluating that and looking at that. So I found some uh, some longish ones that I kind of like, um, and I, I bought a couple of different styles. Uh, these are straight, and I uh, I bent the tips um, a little bit too to uh, to test drive those, but they're shorter. Okay. Um, anyway, so I'm trying them, and I'm going to try some different flavors of these things. And uh, but so far so good. Uh, they go in and out real nice. The length is real important because if they're too short, they 
you see that they uh, they they go down too low and you can't get a hold of them. So part of the issue is, uh, now I don't want to keep them like that because then they're out, right? I want them inside and I want to be able to just grab them and go, right? And you know you're you're constantly picking things up or or reaching into little places to get something out or whatever. Uh, a nice addition to the apron. So um, anyway, uh, Robin, <laughs> thanks for the suggestion, and uh, I'm going to I'm going to drive these for a little while and uh, see if they become part of the permanent uh, permanent setup. So uh, talk to you guys later. Have fun.